Hello and welcome to Hank Games Without Hank. My name is John Green, I'm the manager of the AFC Wimbledon Wimbly Womblies, who, as you can see, are atop their group in uh, the Europa League. Very exciting. We've always wanted to uh, win the Europa League. It's been a long time dream of the Wimbly Womblies. Just kidding, we never imagined that we would play in Europe. But um, now that we are, we're going to do our best um, to win in as many games as possible. Today we're playing uh, Valaranga. Vala, Viala. I'm going to imagine that they're Portuguese. I have I have no idea, to be honest with you. Um, but they've got a pretty good lineup. Um, actually, based on uh, the names of their players, I'm going to imagine that they might be Swedish. Um, and uh, today I'm going to answer some dating. I'm going to give you some dating advice, bad dating advice from a person who had a lot of failed relationships before it, it worked out and um, had to do a lot of maturing on, on along the way. Look at, look at Sermon. He's such a hero. Get there. Get there. Get there. Be a big, strong man. Oh, it's frustrating. That was a little frustrating to watch, I got to say. All right. There's Juan Moresco on the ball. Nice pass into John Green. John Green. Oh, that would have been a beauty. Meredith, what's my what, what's the first problem that someone who watches a, a Wimbly Wombly supporter is having in re their um, their romantic relationships? How to initiate a serious conversation? You mean about love? Oh, you should be able to initiate a serious conversation with your significant other pretty much whenever you, whenever you want, don't you think? Like, I feel like that's what having a significant other is. But maybe I'm old. I don't know. Is it, oh, the post! Oh, saved! Oh, my God, that was almost a beauty. Off the post, and then the rebound comes back out. Half volley, saved. Um, I would, I mean, I would, I guess, like, I'm a big believer in, like, if it's really serious, like, scheduling time, I guess. You know what I mean? Just being like, can we talk later tonight or sometime this week? Like, making it a, a thing so that it's not just like, oh, when I find time. You know, it's like, we are talking today about this serious matter. I, I have... Uh, diabetes. That's what I'm imagining the conversation is going to be. I'm not positive. But yeah, I think if you've got to talk about something serious, maybe schedule the time. But again, I give bad advice, so don't trust me. Are you hurt? I'm sorry if you're injured, but if you're faking because you have the Calum Kennedy haircut, I'm not sorry at all. Oh, you are injured. I'm sorry. Didn't mean to hurt anybody. Just trying to get back on defense. Um, I don't know. What do you think, Meredith? Don't you think? Schedule a conversation? Oh, yeah, but then there's the terrifying aspect of, like, anytime someone says, I want to schedule a conversation with you, like, whenever Meredith says, um, do you have a minute to talk, I'm always like, oh, God, she's going to quit. I know it. I know she's going to quit. So, yeah, you're right. It is kind of terrifying. So maybe you shouldn't do that. I don't know. I give bad advice. Um, I mean, you could also just say, like, do you have a minute to talk about something important? But then that's also terrifying. But maybe the person should be terrified because maybe it's a breakup conversation. I remember one time I, um, I went to therapy and my therapist was like, you have to break up with this uh, person you're dating. And uh, I said, um, we need to have a serious talk. Do you have time to talk today? And the person I was dating said no. And then I was just like, well, in that case, we can just keep dating. <laughs> So always trust me with your dating advice needs. I was not offside. That's a dirty, that's a dirty trick. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess it would be terrifying, but I don't know. Like, there are moments to be terrified, right? It's like sometimes, eventually, well, hopefully not. Hopefully you'll work here for the rest of your life. But, like, if, in all probability, eventually you will come in here and tell me that, that, that you're, you know, that you're leaving. And I'll, I'll try to keep you, and it'll be sad and weird and then you'll still leave even after I offer you more money than the other people are offering you because the grass is always greener on the other side of the fence, isn't Meredith? You're just like, man, there's so many better video series out there that I could host while writing for Mental Floss. Come on! Oh, it's saved. It's a metaphor. It's a metaphor. Clearly Meredith is planning to leave. Are you? She says she's not, but isn't that what they always say? This is why I was a terrible boyfriend. Okay, what's the next, um, what's my next problem? Oh, how to balance a new career and finding a new partner. Oh, yeah. So, like, um, well, Meredith and I can both talk about this because we, when I moved to Chicago, um, I was single. Um, 
and well, and then I wasn't, and then um, and then I was for a long time, for like a long, long time, like uh, you know, like like a couple of years. And I think Meredith, when you moved to Indianapolis, you were single, right? Yeah. Um, and you know, like both, like uh, when I moved to Chicago, I was starting my career. When Meredith moved to Indianapolis, she thought that she was going to be a college student, but she was actually starting her career because she was she interned for us, and then we didn't let her leave. Um, so, like, she did finish college, just for the record. Um, so I don't know. Like, I I remember prioritizing work over. Um, over finding a romantic partner or seeking romantic relationships. That's what I did. But I don't know that my way is the best way because I often prioritize work. I still prioritize work too much, actually. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I wrote Looking for Alaska instead of, like, going out on Saturday nights trying to, trying to meet people. Um, but I also, like, never really knew how to meet people. This was in the, what, what, what um, people on the inter in, in internet science call the pre-Tinder era. So there was no real, I did go on some internet dates, um, but it wasn't as good, you know, it wasn't as, as fast as Tinder. You couldn't just meet someone five minutes after uh, swiping left, right. Meredith also, Meredith's also not positive. Oh man, we're both old. I don't know. What do you, what do you th how was it, what, was that what it was like for you when you first moved to in Indy? Like, she says, yeah, but she, her eyes are lying. Um, oh yeah, always prioritizing work. Um, that reminds me of how you met uh, your partner at a work function. So, um, what's my next question? Is it normal to not want a boyfriend? Yeah. It's completely normal to not want a boyfriend for a lot of reasons. First off, it's totally normal to not want a boyfriend because you don't want to be in romantic or sexual relationships. Um, or you don't want to be in sexual relationships, but you want to be in romantic ones, or you don't want to be in, you want, whatever. You know, like it's, nor all of that's normal. Uh, there is like, I hope that uh, that one good thing that can that can come out of the internet, among many bad things that I think have come out of the internet socially, I hope that one good thing is that you can, you know, you, you hopefully people feel less alone in in all of their things that they wonder if they're normal because you meet people who are like that, or or you can read about people who have those experiences. Like there are lots of asexual people. There are lots of uh, people who. Uh, you know, don't want to be in romantic relationships. Also, you can not want to be in a romantic relationship or not want to have sex and not be asexual. You could just not want to have sex during right now. Um, I don't know. I went through long periods of my life where I didn't, where I wasn't sexually active and I didn't have clearance by, uh, by VIF, our, our, our opponents here. I've forgotten their names. The Swedish VIF. Um, I don't know. Don't you think? Like, it's not that big of a deal. If you don't want to have a boyfriend, I think it's nice. I, I don't know. No hurry. And also no need to ever have a boyfriend. Um, boys are kind of dumb. I don't want to overgeneralize, but, but they are. You, you, you guys, a lot of you guys are boys. You know what I mean. Um, come on, Sermon. Show your courage. He's all courage. Look at that run. Pure courage. Oh, and somehow it's not a goal. I mean, that run, that kid, Meredith, he's the future of our club. How, what, what's, I'm sorry. Oh, oh, I've been penalized. Right? Isn't that a penalty? Isn't that, a, that has to be a penalty. What? It's a goal kick. That was a lot of, uh, quite, a, quite a lot of replays for a goal kick. I thought for sure, oh, all of my, all of my boys are so tired. It's, you know. We're trying to play so many games. We're still in so many competitions. Meredith, is there, is there are there any other romantic advice questions that I can answer poorly? Why do opposites attract? They shouldn't. Um, I don't. I don't actually find that. I don't know. I mean, I guess opposites attract in the sense Sarah and I are very different in a lot of ways. Um, uh, I don't know. I'm making all three substitutions at once, just like the pros do. Well, I guess it's nice to have, to, uh, th there's a theory of like having somebody who fills your, your gaps. Oh, context is everything. Um, 
but like it, I think it's more a question of uh, uh, for me of like uh, compatibility. I was never I, I I had a couple of those like really intense um, relationships that were like full of like fighting and drama and everything, and I was really bad at them. Um, some people are good at them and can like handle the fire, you know. Um, I was not one of those people. I can't I can't handle the fire. Look at that guy's last name. God, I wonder if he's available on the transfer market. His beauty. Okay. What? What? Pass, Sermon? That's oh, fine. No, it's our ball. This guy. This referee is very. He's got cheater written all over him. Oh, but the truth is that we all know that a point is enough at this point for the Wimbley Wombleys to move on to the uh, knockout round. So we don't need a win here. Uh, it'd be great. Um, certainly, Sermon has put in a shift. And uh, if nothing else, I'd like to win the game for him. That kid, he just, he, he has nothing but, look at that. He's tracking back. He's tracking forward. He has nothing but courage. It's an amazing thing to, to watch. Um, and, and look, he's still running. He's still running. He just never gives up. He's seven. Oh, he's pretty slow, though, when he gets really tired. But he's 17 years old, and he's pure, pure, unadulterated courage. There, to ball John Green. Ball John Green way outside the box. Oh, hits his own man. It's his own manner that's going in. One last one. How, sh how do I get a celebrity to fall in love with, with me? Um, I mean, I, I have more experience in this than most people. Um, in my experience, uh, I've watched some celebrities fall in love. Never, um, I've never gotten a celebrity to fall in love with me personally, but I have seen celebrities fall in love with other people. Dicko. Dicko, Dicko, Dicko is going to the corner. It's a strategy. Dicko with the cross into Ball John Green. Ball John Green with the goal. And it's a game winning goal in the 89th minute. Ball John Green, John Green. He gives it all for the team. Upon his mustache, we're keen. Ball John Green, John Green. Congratulations to Dicko and John Green, but also congratulations to manager John Green, a.k.a. me, for making three great 75th-minute substitutions to give this team the power that they needed to emerge victorious. And look at, look at that. Look at Juan Maresca still running. The kid's got no quit in him. Look at him. He's still going. I love it. And then it's to Sermon, to Juan Maresca. That's the future of our club passing it out of bounds. But that's, that's what's going to happen. It's going to be Maresca to Sermon for decades. They're like 18 years old. The golden child will be there long after Ball John Green and other John Green have retired. They'll still be at it, and it's a beautiful thing to watch. How about a nice pass to Ball John Green? Why don't you go for two, Ball John Green? Why don't you take it, take it, take it to Dicko Town? Dicko, that was a great chance. Oh, you know what Dicko should have done there? He should have done a bicycle kick. Um, no, don't. You don't want to fall in love with a celebrity. Trust me. Thanks for watching. We won. We're the greatest. Look at little golden child. Best wishes.